Hey everybody, Chad from Patriot Astro. I'm kicking off a couple videos here tonight, so you'll probably see this set up in a couple intros. The one I'm talking about right now is about two triggers you should be using in your advanced sequences. The triggers are center after drift and resume guiding. And these can help you in a number of scenarios, specifically in the case where you have drift on your telescope. So if your telescope just tends to drift over time, or maybe you're worried about clouds or something else, maybe an animal bumps your rig and you're off center. Now your framing isn't right. So half of your night is okay. And then maybe after the clouds clear out the second half of your night, you're not on target or you're not on target enough and you can't use those images. They just won't align properly and you're gonna have to crop too much. Well, what center after drift does is it allows you to plate solve in the background and has some definable parameters. Specifically, it'll ask you, how often do you wanna do this, right? So how many images do you wanna take before you try a background plate solve? And then when the image is taken and it's plate solved, how much deviation will you allow? So how many pixels of deviation will you allow before you're gonna force that plate solve to re-slew and sync your image? Now, this is a real easy thing to add to your sequences. It's something I've added to my shared sequences already. Um, it's a couple simple parameters, but we're gonna go in and show you how to do this. And then I'm gonna do a quick demonstration, not with clouds, but with a t-shirt as a simulation for clouds. The way I'm gonna do this is I'm actually gonna do a poor polar alignment in the first place so that I end up with some drift and then I'm gonna start taking some pictures of some object I haven't decided yet. I'm gonna throw my t-shirt over the top of the scope. I'm gonna let it fail for a while and then I'll come back, take the t-shirt off and we'll let center after drift fix the session. All right, let's just jump right in. Okay, so I've got a basic sequence here. So what I've done is I've named it drift test and my target drift test so I can throw this away. This is not a target I care about. This is just for test purposes. You can see in my triggers, I've got restore guiding and that will fix my guiding. If guiding ever fails, uh, this particular trigger will keep checking throughout the sequence and can bring my guiding back online. So clouds roll through for quite a while, guiding fails, can't guide, can't find a guide star. And then eventually clouds clear up, we can make sure Nina will tell PhD2 to restore that guiding for me. Center after drift, two parameters here. What this is gonna do is basically it says, how often do I wanna do a background plate solve? In this case, I've said I wanna do it every four frames. Now that may be aggressive, right? It depends on how long your exposures are. If I'm doing 10 minute exposures, that's 40 minutes, right? If I'm doing 30 second exposures, that's only a couple minutes. So um, I'm gonna be a little aggressive here just for our test purposes, but four is probably a little low. Um, I wouldn't expect you to drift quite that much or even drifting every four frames. That's, that's a little aggressive, right? I mean, I think I would have to drift pretty far off target, which means I can probably go maybe even eight, 10, 12 frames, right? Before it becomes a problem. But again, factor in the length of your exposure when, when picking a number here. Then I've got maximum mark minutes. And this is saying, okay, I'm gonna check and do this background plate solve every four frames, but when does this become a problem? How far do you have to drift from the centered coordinates of your target before this becomes a problem and you want me to actually use that background plate solve to bring you back and to re-slew back onto the target to reframe the target? I'm just gonna use three arc minutes here. You can see based on the equipment I've got attached, that's only a handful of pixels. I want this to fail, right? You're gonna have to play with these numbers based on your equipment's capabilities and based on your uh, camera specifications, your, your sensor specs, as well as your focal length. Play with those numbers until you get something that works. One thing to be careful about there is a certain amount of drift that's acceptable, right? If I am actually dithering, that is a sort of drift and I want to be able to dither without triggering this, right? I expect to, for the frame to move around a little off center. That's the whole point of dithering. So we wanna be able to allow for dithering, but fix it when we are way off target, right? So something, an animal bumps my rig, clouds come in for two hours, right? Anything like that. So again, play with this number. These are a little aggressive just to show how it works. Now, the way I'm gonna show how it works, again, is with a white t-shirt. I'm gonna throw a white t-shirt over everything here and we'll just let it drift. The other thing I did to this sequence is I kept it very simple. I'm just gonna be running luminance frames, right? This is not a target I care about. I'm gonna be doing 30 second luminance images just to prove the point. So we're gonna go ahead and kick this off. It's gonna start and do a plate solve here. And one of the things I did to cause us some trouble specifically 
is I've got a very poor polar alignment. When I put the t-shirt over the guider in the lens, what I wanna do is I wanna simulate cloud activity and I wanna show that with a poor polar alignment over some period of time, you're gonna get drift or your mount just doesn't track. Or again, if someone bumps your telescope and now you're just uh, pointed a little bit off frame, that's the point of these instructions to bring you back, right? To fix the remainder of your night. And it's doing this while you're sleeping potentially, right? That's the best part of it all. So let's go ahead and let it autofocus. I'm gonna speed through this and we'll let it start taking some pictures and I'll come back and talk to you one more time here before I put the t-shirt on. Okay, so we can see that we've gone through a number of commands at the beginning of our setup here. So we've center and slewed via plate solve. We have uh, done our autofocus. And now I'm going into this very basic sequence and I'm just gonna go through very quickly a whole bunch of 30 second luminance frames. And then because it's in a loop, it'll just keep doing this over and over. So what we wanna pay attention to is center after drift and the data off to the right. So we'll see as the exposures roll through, it's gonna track those. And eventually it's gonna background plate solve one of those images and it's gonna determine how far off target we are, right? So we expect to be within three arc minutes. We're gonna be some distance off from that. Now we've got a really bad polar alignment. I hope I didn't do it so poorly that it actually fails right out of the gate. Um, I'm hoping that I'm still within the tolerance level, so it'll just keep taking pictures. So at that point, after we get our first measurement, I'm gonna simulate clouds by putting the t-shirt over the scope. Okay, so you can see that background plate solve just took place, right? And it's still taking pictures while that was occurring, so it's still in the middle of a frame. And you can see I'm 0.97 off from a 3.0 maximum that's allowed. So let's come back here and I'm gonna show you one other thing before I cover up the scope. If I come back into imaging, if I scroll down here, you can see I'm taking images, but if I go up a little bit, you can see the triggers, right? This is my resume guiding trigger. And this trigger right here is the center after drift, right? I'm 0.97 out of three. So let's go ahead and cover this up. Now this is something you never wanna walk outside and see on your scope. Don't try this at home. Now almost immediately, yep, I'm getting complaints, right? So PHD2 is complaining. If I come back over here, we can see it does not like the picture of the t-shirt. It's gonna complain if I come back into Nina. Uh, it eventually will start throwing some errors as it tries to get guiding going again. We can see down in the bottom left corner, it says start guiding. It's trying to get my guiding working and it's not gonna work. I'll start getting some errors to pop up in the bottom right, there we go. So it says that it can't find a suitable guide star. Unless there's one on that t-shirt, it's not going to happen. So we're gonna let this run for a little bit here and then we'll come back and hopefully, now that I'm simulating clouds and there's no guiding to bring me back into alignment, hopefully what's gonna happen here is that my telescope's polar alignment is so bad that after just a little bit of time, I'm gonna be off frame far enough for that command to bring us back. And again, this is something that's gonna save you in the middle of the night. So I'm gonna go away for a little bit, we'll come back and we'll take the t-shirt off and see what happens. Okay, so you can see I'm back here. Uh, I've let it drifted for quite a while. It's been complaining quite a bit. Uh, we can see a number of images are, you know, they're just not reporting anything because they're getting a blank screen. If I look at PHD2, um, it's sort of as to be expected it's complaining, you know, we're gonna, we keep trying to resume guiding, but there is no star to resume guiding on. So this does fail, right? And we are gonna take my t-shirt or simulated cloud off and we're gonna see what happens. Now, everything can see the sky. So we know that my main scope can see the sky and we know that my guide scope can hopefully grab a guide star. Let's see how these triggers work out. So we can see it's trying to guide and it actually says now it's settling. It looks like guiding's coming back. So this is just like the clouds that go away, right? We're starting to get something here. We're trying to expose images. We can see we got a number of images that are just no good here. We had no data. And if we watch, remember, our distance here, we were at 0.97 of a maximum of three arc minutes. So we're gonna see at some point, the resume guiding will work. We're getting images. We should get a background plate solve at some point here. And that background plate solve, when that does kick in, that may recenter us. 
So let's go back and look at the sequencer. And we can see right now we're at three of four exposures. And again, this is gonna do this every four. So even though the clouds parted, it's not a miracle, right? If you've got this set to 10 and you're off target, you may get some bad images. The goal is to bring us back, right? So we've hit our four images. We should be doing a background plate solve. Look at this, we crossed 3.29 of three that were allowed. So we have in fact exceeded the threshold of the number of arc minutes of movement that we have allowed. Now we are in the middle of an image. So let's let this image complete. Now look at this, recentering after too much drift. So now it is forcing a plate solve and a recenter as a result. So what has happened, right? What's my simulation? My simulation is it's the middle of the night. I'm in bed. I'm taking pictures. Clouds roll through, roll through for a little while, maybe even a couple hours. Unexpected high level clouds roll through. My guiding's off. My tracking's not great. Maybe even an animal bumps to the mount. Everything bad that could happen does happen. And now I'm off center. Now, rather than wake up in the morning with an additional four hours of pictures that I cannot use because they're so far off center, Nina has fixed that for me. It has determined I'm off center. It is recentering me and it is bringing me back within my tolerance level. Hopefully this helps you. Hopefully this is something you will add to your sequences. Be on the lookout for my downloadable sequences. You can go find my video on that. The current sequences I have work fine. I am in the process of improving them and you will see an update to that as well and continued updates over time. If you have any questions, please let me know. Feel free to ask. Reach out to me any way you can get in touch with me, and I'm always glad to help, but this is definitely something you should be doing. So do yourself a favor. Get outside. Get Nina running. Get some of this great advanced sequencer capability and put it into use. And of course, as always, clear skies.